Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Job Wiwa Sikala, Zimbabwe opposition politician. If you enjoy this conversation, remember to subscribe, to like, and to share. Let's get down to some work. My brother, Job Wiwa Sikala, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Trevor, for your invite. Wow. Well, you know, it's um, you're being incarcerated for 595 days. I don't think there's a normal person who is not touched by the time that you spent um, in prison. You are out now. You've also have, have had to go to court for to face charges of publishing falsehoods on your Facebook page. Talk to me about your state of mind, 595 days in prison. You know, these are some of the vicissitudes human beings meet in life. It has not been easy for me. I have been treated like a terrorist. Mm -hmm since the day of my arrest. I was thrown into a solitary confinement, a two and a half meter by one meter prison cell, where I enjoyed the whole long stay of myself in that prison. The difficulty part of it is that you are thrown into this solitary confinement for 17 hours where you are forced to sleep at 3 p.m. until the following day at 8 a.m. The difficulty situation of it is that when there are no electricity and uh, this country has been facing a huge challenge of uh, uh, electricity uh, blackouts, you, you will be in darkness. Mm. The kind of darkness that you, you will have in that uh, prison will definitely have serious impact both on you as a person and also in terms how you could communicate with nature. Mm. Because living in darkness has not ever been our usual uh, circumstances that we have been doing as human beings. Mm. So the situation was extremely very difficult. I had to develop serious and strong mental strength for me to be able to overcome that. The first thing that I told myself is that my persecutors and my oppressors can do whatever they want with me. There are moments when a human being will reach moments to take very serious resolutions uh, about oneself. I reached that moment during the period of my persecution to say, the first thing that I have to understand is for me to, stay, to start the nature of my oppressors, what their intentions was right. for them to throw myself into those conditions. The first thing that I noticed is that they wanted to break me down. Secondly, they wanted myself to... Uh, be humiliated for no any other apparent reason except being the opponent of my adversaries. 
The second thing that I also noticed was that my oppressors wanted me to isolate myself from the world. They did not want me to obtain any information of what was transpiring outside. They governed and regulated all my visits at the prison. Initially, during the first six months of my detention, it was the most difficult period. Mm. They did not allow my family members to visit me. They did not allow anyone from outside, friends, relatives, or anyone to visit me. So they wanted also to isolate myself from the members of uh, the community who could give me strength for me to be able to overcome the conditions that I was living in. So after having noticed the intentions of my oppressors, I told myself that these people think that oppressing somebody will break him to the extent that he will succumb and submit to the forces of oppression. So what I started to do was that I firstly approached the courts of law. for an order seeking that I be allowed to read any material that I need to read. That is in terms of the provisions of the law in terms of section 50 of the constitution of our country mm -hmm. on the rights of the detained persons and those who have been arrested. And also the same provision is amplified in section 70 of our constitution. So after approaching our courts, I was given an order that I can read any material that I would uh, want. So I started reading materials of many people who have gone through the situation that I was going through. So that strengthened you? It did not only strengthen me, mm. It hardened me. Hmm. I became extremely hardened, especially after having read, firstly, Nelson Mandela's own Long Walk to Freedom, hmm. and also his uh, biography by Thompson. Hmm. I also read the way how Chris Hannes' biography, when he, when after the Wanki operation, uh, he was arrested by the Botswana authority and thrown mm. into prison. So in, instead of breaking you, they these hardened conditions me. hardened you. They hardened so did, they didn't achieve what they thought they would achieve. It completely obtained the opposite. Mm. Tell me, when you were inside there, did you okay to you, there's so many opposition members, so, so many opposition leaders. Did you okay to you, why me? I mean, I, the, the, the case of uh, having represented more blessing perhaps as an excuse for imprisoning you. Did it occur to you, why me in particular? Obviously, uh, this was one of the most important questions that I was asking myself daily. And what so, answer did you come up with? Uh, secondly, I had also to put my uh, own persons who could sneak information from me to gather from the sources of my own oppressors, what their intentions were. Mm. Also, number three, I had also the opportunity to meet some of the people from my oppressors camp in prison. Yeah. And uh, generally, I also was inquisitive right. for me to know the reasons why uh, this thing was being done to me. The first thing that they did this to me was that they did not want me to be available during the 2023 uh, general elections mm -hmm. for the people that they were afraid that I will cause chaos and pandemonium in the event of a rigged electoral outcome. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that they said 
job scholar must not be allowed to be present during mm. the election. Secondly, also what I gathered is that they never wanted myself and uh, myself to be a strong uh, backup for the Nelson Chamisa presidential uh, candidature against uh, uh, his opponent in, 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 during that election. Mm, mm. They said that that will strengthen Nelson Chamisa to, to the extent that uh, this man can cause trouble in this country. Mm, mm. Uh, number three uh, was that they also wanted to make sure that my incarceration will divorce me from the general membership and colleagues that I was working with during the period of my incarceration. Mm. They wanted to cultivate animosity and hostilities because during the process of this incarceration, they have been spreading counterintelligence uh, rumors both uh, to my ears and also to the ears of Nelson Chamisa and the ears of my other colleagues who were outside to create a wage and hostility between the two of us. However, you understand that in human, in human life, people take things differently. Mm. Some people believed yeah. some of the things that they were to being told by counterintelligence operatives. Mm. Is, is this to the extent that, I mean, <clears throat> let me go to your letter, uh, job of uh, the 1st of January 2023, where you say, the University of Chikurubi Security Prison has revealed to me the treacherous sellouts colluders with my persecution, opportunists trying to capitalize on the predicament of the moment for cheap political and financial gain from the tormentors. And you also say, I long discovered that some people have been working secretly, conniving with my tormentors. Is, is this the, the counterintelligence that, you, that you're dealing with? Did you believe that uh, your comrades outside were working against you? Not specifically. Uh, but however, you, you, you know what? I want to be very frank with you. Mm -hmm. the, 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 there was there were some rumors, falsely so. Yeah. That, what were the rumors, Joe? Uh, that, that that were being spread around uh, by people who wanted, who did not carefully study the reasons of why I was arrested. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned to you, the SNPF's intentions was to eliminate yeah. me from the electoral process. They did not want to see me mm. there. They did not want to see me as the backup to 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 Nelson Chamisa's presidential bid. They didn't want that. Thirdly, they wanted to make sure mm. that uh, my relationship with my other colleagues outside mm. were going to be affected mm. by planting these rumors, yeah. which they did. That was that. The most dangerous rumor which heartened my oppressors, which was spread, which are false, and I want this one to be very known by sure. anyone, mm -hmm. was that, no, Job Scala, what he has been doing in whatever he was doing, he, is, he has been used and he was working in collusion uh, with the General Chwenka to overthrow uh, Emerson Mnangawa's presence in this country. A pure lie created, I, I don't know for what purpose. So when this rumor was also uh, conveyed to my oppressors, my oppressors became hardened. Through a lie. Mm. I, I, I have never met General Schwinger. I, I don't know him. Where this rumor emanated from, mm -hmm. and for it to be said, I, 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 I still wonder up to present day what the mm. intentions was. What was the effect of that rumor on people like Nelson Chamisa? No, I, do, I don't know because I was, I was not there, mm. but it is one of those that has been spread mm. against me when I was inside. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it, 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 it received, it's received recipients mm. uh, from my oppressors to believe the same. Mm. 
that truly there was some collusion between me and General Shwenga, but mm. I don't know General Shwenga, we mm. never met. Mm. The mm. only time I met him was in July 1997. Right. Some, mm. some, some 30 years ago, I think, mm. uh, some, some 20 plus years ago, I think, mm -hmm. when we, we as student leaders visited, when we, when we visited the State House after invitation to a meeting mm. by the late President Robert Mugabe, to go and solve the issues. Why we have been causing demonstrations at the University of Zimbabwe, mm. what were our grievances and what were our concerns. Mm. President Mugabe invited for that, for us for that meeting. That is the only day I saw his face. Up mm. to present, I've never, never met, met him. him. I've never talked to him. I don't know him. Mm. I don't know why this rumor was spread against me. Mm. Because in such a situation, what happens is, if such a rumor is spread against your opponent, your opponent becomes Hardened. Right. Secondly, you could do anything. Mm. Because you would see myself as a conspirator against his, his authority. Mm. So, so, so that rumor honestly mm. really, really, really affected. But the other rumor that I think affected you um, is the rumors about around your comrades. Because your letters were pretty pointed. Yeah. That those who are used to regard as friends have never visited or brought me even a banana. I long discovered that they have been secretly conniving and working with my tormentors to get rid of me. The letters were very pointed in that regard. Have you come out and have you revised these positions? I, 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 can't, I can't revise them. Okay. On the basis that uh, this is what has been said. Okay. Not pointedly to anyone. Okay. But this was just a general rumors that were spread around about me, mm -hmm. uh, where, whose source and origins still are unknown. Okay. Uh, but, but, but it was coming from, 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 it was said to be coming and originating from, from my colleagues, mm. uh, whom, whom, whom specifically I don't know who that person is, frankly speaking. I, I, I don't know, but, but these things were said to be originating. Mm. Uh, 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 from those people mm. who... Th these were strong views. I, I want us to move away from this. These were strong views. Now you've come out. Do you... Is there peace now between you and your comrades? I, I, I don't have... I don't hold any, anything against anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, what has happened has happened. Mm. I have gone through the difficult period. Mm. Uh, and uh, I understand what it means to me. Mm -hmm. So Zimbabwe needs to, to move forward. Mm. We, we cannot look at the difficulties of the past mm. to determine the vision of, for the future. Mm. So the future is more important about what, what has happened. I cannot recoup mm. the, lo the last mm. two years when I was in prison. Mm. I can't recoup them. Mm. Uh, I've lost it. I've lost them. Uh, and um, I, you, you know, my, my, my business completely uh, uh, broke down. My legal practice was ruined. I found everything in tatters. Nothing was holding. And I have to yeah. start afresh. No, I have to start my life very afresh. very painful. Let's, let's just take a break there. Business in tatters. Life on a standstill. You have to start, start afresh. Zimbabwe needs to move forward, you're saying. Uh, viewers at home, don't go away. Join us after the break when we drill down into those issues. What does the future look like as far as uh, job as an opposition politician is concerned? So see you on the other side. I had an endless running stomach. I ended up passing out blood. Welcome back to our conversation with Job Wiwa Sikala, Zimbabwe opposition politi politician. Um, Job, when you're in prison, and again, I get this from your letters, 595 days, you, your, your letters convey a lot of gratitude for the support that uh, the public offered to your wife, 
paying for your school for the school fees for your kids and some actually making monthly contributions for the sustenance of your family do you have any message now for those zimbabweans that gave you that support no surely surely i i was always and remain thankful to the people who stood with my family what i have also noticed is that when you are a person dealing specifically with public affairs issues, you, you, you must be organized first financially. That when trouble comes the way how it visited myself unexpectedly, mm. the, 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 the family must not be allowed to survive on arms. But on the basis that this was a lightning that struck unexpectedly, and uh, without, uh, without even myself anticipating or uh, noticing the intentions of my enemies, my family had to remain surviving on the goodwill of other people. Mm. Thousands and thousands of Zimbabweans, both domestically and internationally, came on board, mm. put their heads together, contribute in their own small way to make sure that one, my, ch my children continue going to school. Secondly, that my wife was able to visit me daily to Chikurub Maximum Prison. And uh, traveling from Chitungwiza to Chikurub Maximum Prison is a distance of, of um, a, a 50 kilometers from Chitungwiza to, 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 to Chikurub Maximum Security Prison. So she was traveling 100 kilometers to and fro daily uh, bringing me food because it was not going to be possible for me to eat the food from prison on the basis of security mm, concerns. fears mm. and, and concerns. Uh, definitely, I understood uh, during my stay at the prison how Luka Atmasuku uh, lost his life. And Luka Atmasuku and Dumiso Tawengwe were also living on the same uh, uh, solitary dungeons that I was living. So being under the custody of your of your enemies like that, you, you need to be extraordinarily careful mm. in what you eat, on how or on even where you bath, in, in whatever you touch, and everything. And to make sure that uh, unwanted visitors do not come to your room on the basis that at one po particular point when my room was searched uh, from Norway, I don't know for what purpose, the prison, just, the prison officers just came invaded that uh, little small, small room, searching it all over, turning upside down my food, everything that was inside. The time when I ate food that afternoon, mm. I became extremely sick for the following three consecutive days. Hmm. I vomited endlessly. I had an endless running stomach. I ended up passing out blood. So since then, I, 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 I had to scream to make sure that the world knows of what has happened hmm. to me. Hmm. And uh, so that visit was not was mm. not was not. Do you suspect they did something to your? I I, I don't know. I, I don't have evidence. Yeah. But it 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 unfortunately happened mm. after their visit into mm. my room. Mm. So 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 the coincidence become very inquisitive. Mm. Tell me, you've come out now. I would have have you been have you gone for medical checkup checkups, blood tests and everything else to ensure that uh, you are okay from any suspected poisoning, long term, short term. No, Has that I, happened? No, I haven't. You haven't. Yeah, don't forget that. Uh, despite that case that was keeping me in prison, that of more blessing Ali, there were other four cases with the my enemies that pressed against me. Mm -hmm. One which you mentioned to me when we greeted each other, mm. uh, the charge of publishing falsehoods prejudicial to the state. On, on Facebook? Uh, on, 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 allegedly on a Facebook with my name and my picture. Mm. The first thing is that there was no end proof that I am the one who runs that, that Facebook page. Secondly, they wrote to, to Facebook 
and forced Facebook, told them off, saying that we, we, we are only concerned on issues of money laundering, fraud, and other issues. And uh, we, we cannot accept the situation where human rights issues are concerned mm. for mm. us to be collaborators okay. uh, in human rights violations. Mm. So we are not prepared to cooperate with you. Mm. They were dismissed. Okay. They did not have any evidence for, the, for them to sustain my defense. But I don't know that, mm. that Facebook page. And mm. truly, I don't know about it. Mm. There is even a fake person who opened a new uh, X account uh, on, 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 in February, mm. in February 2024, uh, which proposed to be myself, which is mm. posting a lot of rubbish. Mm. So are you comfortable sitting there not having gone through any medical tests that you're okay? Definitely I'm not comfortable. Mm. But, but there, is no, there is nothing that I can do. You don't have the time to do, you haven't had the time to do that. Not, not that, on the basis that the, my enemies, are still, my oppressors are still uh, holding me hostage. Mm -hmm. There are other three Charges cases that, you yeah, that I'm, that I'm mm -hmm. facing mm -hmm. uh, uh, before the courts, mm -hmm. before the courts of this country. So I they, they, are, they are not yet done. Mm -hmm. uh, they are all on the judgment, on the judgment, on the judgment um, um, uh, uh, side now. And uh, I'm waiting mm -hmm. to to see how this matter's gone mm -hmm. uh, before I. Which, can is, which is which is which are these cases? Can we just no, run the, them? Yeah, yeah, the first the first one is mm -hmm. the is the recent uh, one which they procured uh, some conviction on mm -hmm. publishing falsehoods okay. on a charge that no longer exists in our law. A constitutional court dismissed that charge long long time ago mm -hmm. on the Chimakore case, mm -hmm. and also the second one is on disorderly conduct where they were alleging that myself and some other guy from Stumbuza, we went and disrupted the San Pio rally, which was completely hawkwash. Mm. The whole lawyer and the member of parliament personally going to to, to disrupt the San Pio rally. Mm. Some of these allegations are so laughable. Then the third one is on alleged that uh, myself, Opal Shimono and uh, Jacob Ngarofume incited public violence. 31st, uh, yeah, on the 31st of July, July movement, the, yeah? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 the, and we are, we, are, we are also waiting for the judgment on that case. So so basically, I'm still tied. Mm. Uh, uh, the, the, my enemies are still on me. Mm. And uh, like what I told you, mm. let them do whatever they want. Absolutely. I don't care. Tell me, you, you, you know, my sense is, uh, uh, push back as much as you want, that... You're grateful that thousands of Zimbabweans came up and supported your family. Um, you would have preferred that you would be in a position to, to do better. And my sense is that Zimbabweans, I would have expected there be an outpouring that is continuous for the 595 days that you're inside to say, Job, we were, Sikala should be out. Free, we were, free, we were. But there was little of that. And it leads me to say, the message that Zimbabweans send to people like you, politicians, in the opposition is that you're on your own. You will do whatever you do. You'll go into prison. We'll go on with our lives. What's your pushback on that? Not, 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 quite, not quite correct. Don't forget some initiatives that were done by other Zimbabweans of goodwill. Mm -hmm. You, you don't underestimate the petition which was initiated by Professor Ibu Mandaza, yourselves, Sisi um, Karimka, Bruce Globella, and other persons. It, it really raised the issue of my incarceration, both at a domestic and international level. Mm. So those kind of initiatives, you cannot run away from them. Sure. So I cannot say that I was by myself. Don't underestimate what people in the UK did, those in diaspora consistently and several times, they went to go and demonstrate at the Zimbabwean embassy in mm. the UK. They also went to go and demonstrate at um, the West Minister and also at the British Parliament. Mm. So you cannot underestimate those physical activities that they did. You cannot underestimate what the people in Namibia did. Uh, you know, I was given every detail of what was happening on the ground. Zimbabweans in Namibia held several demonstrations at the Zimbabwean embassy in Namibia, mm. demanding and highlighting my persecution and incarceration at Shikulupi Maximum mm. Prison.
So those kind of initiatives cannot be dismissed. Number four, you cannot also dismiss some of the initiatives that were done by people like Opel Shimono when they had to go and open Kofani to ask some people to contribute mm. in their small way mm. on finances to sustain my family. Mm. It, had been, it did not been of those generous initiatives that had been done. My, my, my family, my children could have been in the streets. Mm. Uh, my I, wife could not have been able to, to visit me. Mm. And uh, things could have been extremely worse mm. than uh, how they were ameliorated mm. by the contribution of others. In okay. Case. Tell me, you, you, so you're coming out, you find a situation where what used to be CC is in chaos. And you making a pronouncement about reaching out to Zimbabweans to create a new movement of some sort. W what lessons have you learned about opposition politics whilst in prison? What have been your reflections about what responsibility does the opposition have to the future of Zimbabwe? What lessons did prison teach you about opposition politics? Do you know what? When you have got 17 hours of being alone, having the walls of uh, a solitary confinement as your ally and friend, your mind will think so deeply in almost anything. Anything that you start thinking about, you, you will digress it to the deepest end. The most important thing that I realized while I was in prison was that I told myself I joined the mass democratic struggle when I was a boy and married without children or anything. Where have we gone wrong mm. in our long journey for us to be able to deliver the long awaited freedom change, yeah, mm. freedom and change in our country. Why have we not been able to do this for this so long a time? Because 44 years after independence to the present day, our people are still suffering. We are living under the jaws of an authoritarian regime for 44 years after independence. Many people's lives perished for no apparent reason except holding a different political view. Something which our oppressors do not want to hear. Mm -hmm. When you remind them of the impunity and excesses that they did in this country during the period of Kukrahundi, they become extremely angry. When you, told, when you tell them about the excesses which they did against the Zimbabweans since 1990 up to 2000 before the foundation of the MDC, they become extremely angry. People have not forgotten ab abuse against humanity mm. that took place between, 19, that between 2000 and 2010. Mm. When people we chopped their hands, specifically for having voted a leader of their own choice. The 2008 short and long sleeve yeah. operation was the most heinous abuse against humanity ever witnessed in the civilized world. Mm. And they are still continuing on the same path. Fought four years mm. after independence in the 21st century. Mm. Thank you for watching part one of our conversation with Job Wiwa Sikala, Zimbabwe opposition politician. Join us on the other side for part two. So that was something that really, really, really wanted mm. me a lot. Mm. Was about the welfare of my children. Mm. So it, mm. it, it is something that was really, mm. really tormenting. Because my children never suffered during the period when, before all this difficult period mm. came to me. My brother, I see your tears, I see your pain. Tell me, have you... Switch off, please. Switch mm. off, please. Mm. Mm.